Judea Pearl, The Book of Why, The New Science of Cause and Effect. Embark on a thrilling journey through the world of cause and effect as we explore Judea Pearl's groundbreaking book, The Book of Why, The New Science of Cause and Effect. Discover the vital elements behind causality and its significance in various research fields from medicine to climate science. Learn about the ladder of causation, a unique concept that sheds light on the various processes behind causal thinking. As we delve deeper into this fascinating world, you'll see that understanding causation is paramount, especially in the realms of data interpretation and the possible future of artificial intelligence. The Causal Revolution The scientific community for the past few decades has downplayed the idea of causation, with, correlation does not imply causation, being repeated ad nauseum. Carl Pearson, a renowned English mathematician, epitomized this view, claiming that science was nothing more than pure data and that causation was scientifically invalid. However, this attempt at ridicule only hid the causative factor. Geneticist Sewell Wright disproved Pearson's theory by using data to demonstrate that causation could be represented mathematically. His methods were heavily criticized at the time but are now being revived as research fields from medicine to climate science are beginning to embrace causation as a principle. The causal revolution has begun. The ladder of causation. Have you ever considered the importance of analyzing data before drawing conclusions? The ladder of causation explains why this is crucial. Take the smallpox vaccine for example. Early data showed it may have caused more deaths than it prevented, but this conclusion was misinterpreted. By looking beyond the initial observations and asking the right questions, we can uncover important insights that would have otherwise gone unnoticed. The ladder of causation offers a process to climb that helps us understand the common causes of seemingly unrelated data points. So the next time you see a strange correlation, remember to climb the ladder. The ladder of causation. The human tendency to look for cause and effect relationships is the first rung on the ladder of causation. However, neither animals nor AI can get past that step. Data collection also falls short of determining causality. While observing basic probability may suffice for some inquiries, it is not nearly enough for most other occasions. Progressing up the ladder of causation. Humans' active influence on outcomes using controlled experiments. Humans have the unique ability to actively influence outcomes, progressing up the ladder of causation. To reach the second rung of this ladder, one must ask the question, what if we do, and then take action. Unlike the passive first rung, this requires active intervention in influencing outcomes. For example, the dental hygiene marketing manager may ask, will floss sales be affected if we change the price of toothpaste? Computers cannot currently be programmed to accurately ask these questions, limiting their ability to progress beyond the first rung. One of the best ways to test the effect of something is through a controlled experiment, where groups as similar as possible are compared, and a test is applied to one but not the other. This method allows variables and their effects to be objectively measured and isolated. Controlled experiments are not a new concept, they have even been reported in the Bible. In the story of Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar sought out captured nobles to educate in his elite Babylonian diet. Daniel suggested a controlled experiment where he and three friends were given a vegetarian diet while another group had the king's diet. After ten days, Daniel's group flourished, and Nebuchadnezzar gave them high court positions. In modern times, Facebook utilizes controlled experiments by experimenting with different page configurations and comparing groups that see different settings. In conclusion, actively influencing outcomes through controlled experiments is a vital and effective approach in progressing up the ladder of causation. The Power of Counterfactuals Humans have a unique ability to imagine how different actions can lead to different outcomes. This ability is put into practice using counterfactual models, which help picture what would have happened if another action had been taken. Counterfactuals are not always an easy concept for machines to understand. In counterfactual questions, humans often skip over the ordinary or expected causal factors and concentrate on the unusual or extra ones. 
For example, saying a house burnt down because of a lit match rather than oxygen. Machines don't automatically make these sorts of distinctions and have trouble understanding the concept of necessary and sufficient causes of an event. Understanding the three rungs of the ladder of causality is important in helping answer causal questions, and this leads us to the question of which complicating factors should be identified for scientific studies. Controlling confounding variables Confounding variables can be misleading in an experiment. This summary explores ways to control them, such as randomization in conducting controlled experiments. In an experiment, confounding variables can influence both the participants and the outcome, leading to misleading results. Confounders are tricky and difficult to eliminate, especially when it is impossible to discount a third variable that could be responsible for the outcome. One way to control for confounders is by introducing randomization, where biases of researchers are controlled by randomly assigning participants to control and treatment groups. However, randomization may not always be practical or ethical, such as in the case of testing the link between smoking and lung cancer. It would be impossible to ethically tell a random group of people to smoke for 30 years in order to test the link. Furthermore, Collecting data from people who are taking prescription drugs of their own volition may not yield accurate results since people's decision to the drug may be based on affordability or other reasons. Researchers should intervene by conducting a controlled experiment to control for this type of confounding variable. It is important to identify and control for confounding variables in an experiment. Age is an example of a confounder, and to control for this variable, only people of similar ages should be compared across the groups. While adjusting an experiment to take into account these variables may require intervention, it is necessary to ensure accurate results and avoid misleading conclusions. The importance of identifying the right mediator. The key to preventing diseases and finding a cure is identifying the right mediator. Mediators are variables that tell us why one factor leads to a particular result. They go hand in hand with counterfactuals and can be illustrated using the ladder of causality. The classic example of misidentifying the mediator is scurvy. Sailors assumed that the acidity of citrus fruits was preventing scurvy, but it was actually the vitamin C levels in the body. Due to this misconception, many died in expeditions without access to vitamin C. Therefore, it is crucial to establish the right mediator to generate accurate causal diagrams and prevent disastrous consequences. Causal Diagrams in AI The idea of whether correlation implies causation has always been a controversial topic. Many healthcare practitioners use causation diagrams to test the efficiency of a drug. By presenting all known factors in one place and linking them with arrows, the mediators and confounders can be easily identified. By progressing step by step, a mathematical formula can be engineered, making it possible for robots to benefit from this process. The formula can be programmed so that it can be used to ask why, and computers could be able to calculate an answer along with the statistical uncertainty in that answer. This development can lead to significant advances in the fields of science and medicine. In conclusion, The Book of Why reveals the intricacies of causation and its central role in our understanding of the world around us. With the ladder of causation, we gain valuable insights into how humans naturally move from observation to intervention, and finally, to imagining counterfactual scenarios. The book also highlights the potential for significant breakthroughs in both science and medicine, by effectively harnessing the power of causation. Overall, this groundbreaking work leaves the reader not only enlightened about the importance of causal reasoning, but also eager to witness the unfolding of the causal revolution and its lasting implications on our understanding of the world.